I have seen- I just pinched my fingers so f***ing bad. I have seen into the future. And what does the future bring? Two shows squaring off on one streaming service. The Wheel of Time will prove its merits against the Lord of the Rings, or Middle Earth show, but it's the God Numenor, it's not. The Tolkien show, that sounds like a re- I don't- The show that takes place before the Lord of the Rings that has Middle Earth in the same world, but we're not entirely sure where exactly Numenor is the th ah. And I get asked quite a bit, which one do you think will be more successful? Which one is going to be the streaming service maker Amazon wants it to? Well, I have quite a bit of thoughts, but I quickly want to insert here. We have seen a lot of new information come out about the Lord of the Rings show, but fortunately, Craig and I over at the Legendarium did a video on everything you need to know, and a lot of our predictions of what the show could be about were 100% correct. <laughs> so pretty much all the new stuff that's come out in that synopsis, if you want to know about, right there. Craig, you're a genius. You did a great job. But let's go ahead and get into my thoughts on which of these shows will perform better. Because it's a more complicated answer than you might think. Let's go ahead and get into what people know about them now. If you go up to your average person on the street and say, Huh! Where's Lord of the Rings? They're gonna tell you a reasonably accurate answer. But if I went up to a random person in Richmond and went, Huh! What's the Wheel of Time? They're gonna go, I don't know. <sighs> Why are you yelling at me? And that's a hurdle for the Wheel of Time to conquer. Marketing and name recognition are pretty huge for a show's launch, and I think that kind of just inevitably makes the assumption fairly safe that The Lord of the Rings will have a bigger viewership on episode one start. No one's really going to dispute that. The real interesting question comes into what do these shows bring to the table in terms of sustainability for the seasons? And then we're also going to get into why I think Amazon isn't going to be canceling either of these shows anytime soon after doing a good bit of research on that. And then I'm just going to finish off this video by talking about which one I think will be better to me in my subjective opinion. Okay, but going ahead and getting into what's going to allow these shows to maintain a viewership audience. I'm going to make the assumption that both of them are good for this video. Obviously, if one of them is atrociously bad and is just making the fans angry, that one will perform worse. And it could go that both of them are that way or both of them are great. But for this, we're gonna go for the middle ground and say both are good, good enough to maintain viewership and keep people engaged. As I said, Lord of the Rings will have the bigger start. I'm willing to put a significant amount of money down that day one, because of just more people wanting to watch, one, the most expensive show in television history, which the Lord of the Rings show absolutely is, and two, the fact that it's Tolkien, it's going to have a huge amount of people tuning in to watch it, as well as a crazy number of reviews being uploaded same day to uh, the uh, YouTube platform. And I'm, I can't wait to find the one guy who's going to be like, why isn't this, why isn't this, Swear Sauron? There's going to be someone who doesn't get it. And I can't wait to see that. Now, The Wheel of Time, I don't think will do poorly in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I think The Wheel of Time will outperform what a lot of people expect it to on day one. It will inevitably be in the shadow of The Lord of the Rings show at first, but I think its numbers will be impressive enough, especially with the fact that this is a very flashy and upfront magic system and world that you can easily market with to definitely engage people. And I've already seen like people who aren't really aware of the Wheel of Time, who like see the fandom and start hearing little snippets, really be enticed by various aspects of the world. The more that the Wheel of Time disseminates amongst everyone, assuming the show is good, I think it will have a pretty high return rate on people wanting to go ahead and check it out. I mean, there's just things that sound enticing, like men who use magic systems in this world go insane. <laughs> there's gingers in the desert. <gasps> sunburned. Armies of hundreds of thousands clashing as fireballs and gateways ignite the sky. And the fact that there's a city that's a giant vagina. I think that'll get a lot of people interested. So while I think Lord of the Rings has the advantage of immediate strong performance, I think Wheel of Time we will see have a steady incline in viewership and be one of those things that does just become 
well-known mainstream breakout appeal, and I'm going to say outperform everything Amazon has put out so far, except for Lord of the Rings. I'll put it above Carnival Row and the boys in viewership easily. And that's largely due to the fact that it has an extraordinary built-in fan base to propel it as well. I'm not saying that the fans aren't there to give it a strong day one. I'm just saying in comparison to Lord of the Rings, it's not as strong in its day one. But as the Wheel of Time continues to grow, what will the Lord of the Rings be doing? There is obviously a rock core to the Lord of the Rings base that will watch even if it's horrible and atrocious. The diehard Tolkien fans are gonna watch even if it's the worst show ever made, because they need to know. And same thing with the most hardcore Wheel of Time fans. Assuming they're both good though, the Lord of the Rings I think will actually struggle a tid tiddly tiny bit more to keep its viewership up than Wheel of Time. And that's because of the growth versus everyone already knows. People are going to check out Lord of the Rings day one, but two months into the show airing, eh, some people might just go, yeah, it's Lord of the Rings again. It's a different age. I'm not invested in these characters. I don't really know and move on. I've seen it before. And I know that sounds crazy to fantasy fans. Like you haven't seen this before. It's the second age. It's different, Numenor. But, <laughs> but to your average person on the street, they probably don't give a shit. Wheel of Time though, again, is just going to be growing and growing as more people check it out. And I think with certain appeals this series has, it will have a much easier time enticing viewers to stay all the way to the end. Well, it is a tropey fantasy story that we've seen before with chosen ones, etc., etc., with the angles of mental illness and all these different cultures and rich, rich characters. Pretty much everyone who's read Wheel of Time, even the detractors, will admit like they're some of the best characters in the history of fantasy. People will be invested based off that level alone. And I actually predict we will see more non fantasy fans tuning into the Wheel of Time than Lord of the Rings as these shows continue to go down the road, assuming they get to a season four, I predict Wheel of Time will actually become the one that more people who don't care about fantasy are watching because Robert Jordan does have a higher emphasis on interpersonal relationships, politics, a lot of the things that Game of Thrones captured and help it balloon outside of the standard genre audience. Meanwhile, Lord of the Rings being in the second age, this is die hard fantasy. They can try and pull away from that a bit and give it more of that appeal to a mass audience, but the more they do so, they could actually potentially anger the die, 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 die hard Tolkien fans. I'm not saying there isn't great relationship stuff in the second age already known, but is it enough to fill out seasons and seasons of television? You have to start diverging at a certain point, and then you're causing conflict in your audience because we all know Tolkien fans aren't exactly the guys who go, oh yeah, just change it, that's fine. I'm not, it's fine, just go and change it, it's cool. I'm mad at all. It's their Bible versus Robert Jordan fans who we've already seen some changes be announced for the show. And generally, a lot of them just go, yeah, that makes sense. Recently they said they're not gonna give Tom a harp, he's gonna have a little guitar. Assuming a guitar would look better on screen and a harp might look a bit silly. And I didn't see one person who was mad about that. And that's a pretty like huge character item. I think Jordan fans are gonna have an easier time with changes and not be as upset by anything that comes. Granted. I think Tolkien fans are more likely to spite watch. I think if it goes bad, more Tolkien fans will tune in like, <laughs> I gotta know. <laughs> And then there's just the broader translation issue with this being second age over here versus fairly modern fantasy with a lot of the appeal that still is a strong within the genre. This is going to be more legwork to be attractive to a modern audience. And it's legwork with caveats where you could accidentally alienate your core base. Whereas over here, the story at the heart of it appeals to everybody, right? I've even gotten non-fantasy fans to read the entire Wheel of Time. I've never gotten a non-fantasy fan to read anything second age. Okay, all right, that's my general thoughts and predictions about these shows. Initial success, growth, and sustainability. I think both of them will be successes who have crazy numbers, and I don't think either one of them will be a disappointment to Amazon. I think Lord of the Rings' biggest hurdle is going to be continuing to try and tell a story that is true to Tolkien, but appealing, and Wheel of Time over here just doesn't have that big a problem. And with it having nothing but potential to become better known and grow within the cultural zeitgeist we all live in, it'll be interesting to watch to see if it can catch up and pass Lord of the Rings. But let's talk about why I don't think Amazon will actually cancel either of these shows. Amazon really, really, really wants their streaming service to start getting the viewing numbers of a Netflix. They're not there. And why that's so important, an individual subscriber who signs up for Amazon Prime and starts watching these shows is drastically more valuable to Amazon than your average Netflix subscriber is to Netflix. The reason why is if you decide, hey, all right, I'm gonna sign up for Amazon Prime, I gotta watch this Lord of the Rings show, you're extremely likely to wanna use the full spectrum of benefits 
from that package. And that includes start shopping on Amazon Prime. That includes using services like Amazon Fresh, maybe even their new Amazon Pharmacy. And so that one person who is interested for a show can start pumping money into the Amazon machine. So they really, really, really want these shows to be appealing to people. And if they have a show that is known for being canceled at season two and left fans disappointed, it's crippled. It's not gonna get people to sign up for the service. So at minimum, they need to keep these going to the point where they can have a satisfactory ending for the fans who do follow through, even if it's not well received. So Amazon's not looking to have a return on investment for either one of these properties within the next five, hell, maybe even 10 years. What they want to have is what HBO tried to have and failed to have with Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, if it had ended solidly, would be getting people to sign up for HBO Max or just keep their HBO Max subscription for like a lifetime, just so they can rewatch Game of Thrones whenever they want to. I personally, since the Game of Thrones show has ended, don't know one person who's rewatched it. I have yet to meet someone who has rewatched it because of the ending. That means it's lost an extraordinary amount of potential value. Amazon knows it needs to, in some way, shape or form, finish these shows and do it well. That way, even if it's just known as being okay, it has something of like a, yeah, there's a value to this streaming service. I kind of want to check out these shows. Great. And if they're good, if they're awesome, if they're known as being some of the best of the best, then there's droves of people who for the next five, 10, 15 years will sign up for your service for a set piece of time to enjoy whatever content you have, a Lord of the Rings Wheel of Time show is a huge part of that, especially if it's known for ending well, being something fans enjoy. That's valuable. And just during that bit of time, Amazon has a window to pitch you oh so, so, so much. All their services, everything. And if they get you hooked, then the return on investment for making that show for an individual person can be in the hundreds of not thousands of dollars if you then turn around and start using all these other Amazon services regularly for years. So I think the chances of us seeing these shows canceled very prematurely are not high. In fact, if they start performing poorly, I could see Amazon doubling down and trying to go for like a redemption effort, get more money in there, a new creative team, consultants, whatever, because yes, they've literally spent over a billion dollars combined on these two shows. They're probably pretty desperate to make sure there is something there that will have forever value. Forever value in this instance is so, so necessary. So I think at minimum, we're gonna get five seasons of Lord of the Rings show. What they signed up for that contract for, they're gonna go for that five seasons. And for Wheel of Time, a minimum of five to seven is what I'm feeling. Because if they cut this one off early as well, it's another massive loss that will just become known as an unsatisfactory show you shouldn't watch. And then they lose getting that window to hook you in for however much longer. There's a reason they bought two of the most popular fantasy franchises in existence. It's about trying to entice as many as possible into that potential pitch. And they cannot afford for that forever value to be lost. Well, they can, it's Amazon. They could, they could scrap both these projects and go, ah, next thing, we don't care. But with the plan now, after doing a lot of research, I think claiming this many seasons for each is actually rather safe. And okay, now my personal prediction of which show I will like more. Well, they're both pretty far along in their production process now. We've seen quite a bit of little images from the Wheel of Time one, some leaks, some reached on purpose. I've seen the less from the Lord of the Rings show. Uh, I don't think there's been pretty much any set photos put out. They seem to be a little bit earlier on in their production process. Personally, yeah, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, but I'm a bigger Wheel of Time fan. And so I'm going to be more interested in this over here. And I think it's a safer bet that I will like this show more for obvious reasons. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's just my predictions for the two biggest Amazon shows coming down the road. What do you think I got wrong? And what predictions do you have as well that go beyond the thoughts I've vomited in your face here? Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Peace! And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Adam Wright.